Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Day number three is down on the FIFA 23 web app. And what I wanna do today is ask the question, what is next for this market? We're gonna deep dive in and look what could be happening through the next couple of days as we get closer and closer to the all important day of the 27th of September. And that is the early access when we get to open FIFA points and when a lot of people get on the game for the very first time. We're gonna talk about that today. More trading opportunities after yesterday's Friday content, our first FIFA 23 league, and a couple new coin making methods with some non-rare golds. I'm seeing those move a little more on the market. So we're gonna talk about all that and more in today's video. If you're excited for it, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Let's start from the top and just ask that question and try to answer that question. What is gonna happen next in this market on this game? As we are heading into the weekend, we had content yesterday. It wasn't very much. We had a two player pack SBC. It did move the market and we'll talk about that. But one thing I wanna draw your attention to is actually what started happening last year at this time because it was a very pivotal day on the market this Saturday of the web app. Last year in FIFA 22, think about a guy like Lacroix, 77 rated, a lot of supply, but still carrying some value because very overpowered for starter teams. And I mean, 87 pace, everybody wanted this guy last year, right? This is his card this year, 7,000 coins on the market right now. Really good to trade with as well, may I add. But last year on this day of Saturday, what we started to see was a bit of a sell-off and a bit of panic and worry because people were worried about the 4,600 FIFA points and the supply that would bring to the market when it was released. Now, last year it was released on a Monday, but so what you saw was people started selling cards on the Saturday and the Sunday heading into that big day of the early access release, the ultimate edition access, if you will. And you saw a low point for so many cards on that Sunday right before. Last year it was on a Monday, right? The 27th. It's the 27th this year too, but it's a Tuesday. So we had this all this panic selling that started last year on this day. Now, is that going to happen this year? I really don't think it's going to happen too much just yet. I don't feel like there's a lot of panic, a lot of worry about that situation because last year it was something that was brand new and we had not seen it ever before. Um, where EA was giving out the FIFA points instead of just giving us the packs, right? We talk about the, not Pele, we talk about the Pepe card a lot. We take a look at his FIFA 22 card and we see that just like we looked at, you know, on that day of the Saturday, if I zoom in really far here, you're gonna be able to see it way easier than I try to look out from the far angle in this graph. You see, we go from Friday and then boom, Friday goes from 6,000 coins. And then by the time we hit Sunday, he's 4K. A lot of that panic started even a couple days before we actually got to the 4,600 FIFA points being released on the market. So do I think that's going to happen today? Again, like I said, I, I would be a little bit careful with a few cards, but a guy like Renato Sanchez, is he going to drop down to like 10K over this weekend? No, I don't think that Renato Sanchez is going to go down that much. I don't think there's as much fear and as much panic in the market this year. And there's not as big of an unknown in that sense, because we saw it happen last year. Of course, it is a new market. It's a new FIFA. Things could change. Content could change. But especially since it's now Tuesday, it's still four days away. We have some time, right? We've got Saturday, Sunday, Monday to try to plan for these things. I would just keep operating on the market. If you're opening any packs, if you're doing the marquee matchups or the early access challenge, if you're packing those low rated players, like again, a 77 rated Lacroix would still be my example of a card that I would absolutely sell. Or if you maybe pack somebody like St. Juste or even a card like Chalmeni or Timo Werner, the lower tier cards that are 82 rated or below, Darwin Nunez, um, you know, 82 rated or below and not super duper meta. The fine line of Alan St. Maximin being 19,000 coins and, uh, you know, guys like Anthony being 82 rated also being 19,000 coins that have some more potential just because they're so popular and so meta. Those cards, you know, that's kind of a flip of the coin situation where if you want to take the coins, go for it. Uh, if you want to sell the card, sell the card. But again, Kamavinga, Klosterman, um, you know, those types of players, Joe Gomez, would be the ones that I would look to sell and get rid of and move on because you know and we know very well that in the next couple of days, a week from now, those guys are not going to be as expensive 
as they have been in the past couple of days. So we continue to have the same kind of aspect of looking at the cheap cards or the low rated cards and selling those off because we don't want to hold on to them for that long. But then again, for the cards that are a bit higher tier and more expensive um, and that people, a lot of people, again, think about this. A lot of people can't afford these types of cards yet for their team. And that's why you see them continue to go up in price because people that are getting coins every single day by trading, doing SBCs, right? Two days in a row now with the tradable SBC, uh, you know, pack being put on the game that brings supply and it brings coins to the market. And ultimately it makes these higher tier cards go up even more. Neymar hitting a, a high, a brand new all time high on this game so far on day three, 420,000 coins. He keeps rising. Vin, Vinny Jr.'s 200K. Look at how much he is. Messi, 170. He continues to rise. Militao, 65K. A lot of these cards that are on the elite tier just keep rising. Mbappe, 1.2. Ferland Mendy is 50 thousand coins right now on the market and we're going to talk about some fluctuations here in a second but again you can see as i'm recording this video that once again in the nighttime these players are hitting new highs they're continuing to rise on that top tier so i would say keep maneuvering the market in the same way if we get another tradable sbc today on saturday or, or something like that if you're packing any sort of card tradable maybe it's through a preview pack sell the cards that are low rated keep the cards that are a bit higher rated um, unless you just want to sell them so that you, ha you can have some coins to trade with or whatever it may be i just wanted to point that out because last year at this time seriously was a, a big day where people started to sell off those low tier cards because they were afraid about those fifa points this year i don't think we're as afraid of it because we know what happened in prior years so speaking of tradable supply on the market and cards that are moving though and footbin graphs I want to take a look at some of these players and their price movements from yesterday, specifically some of the day three market movements. Now that we have the footbin graphs that show us the whole picture of a day's time and what happened on the game, I want to take a look at this Kyle Walker because this is a perfect example of a new way that you can trade on this market every single day. As I'm recording this video right now, we are on what it's, you know, for late Friday night for me, early Saturday morning as you guys are waking up and watching this, right? We are right around here. We're now recording this video like peak price time for me for a lot of these cards kyle walker right now is back up to thirty-seven thousand coins i just sold mine but take a look at what happened when people woke up and got on the market yesterday on a friday kyle walker went from 36k all the way to twenty-eight thousand coins and he finally rose back to 37k where he is now even with a little bit of a dip later on in the day with some tradable pack supply that two player pack seems pretty harmless right but it actually did bring a lot of supply to the market. I'll show you more in a second. Watch for this same movement today. I know it's being really nitpicky. This is the most fun way to trade in my opinion. I love the swing trades. I love to see these cards move around on the market in this manner. Take a look at Jules Koundé, 32,000 coins right now. He wasn't that all day. He was 30, around 27, 28,000 coins, went down to 24, spiked up to 30, the pack supply came. He went back down in the 20s. Now he's back up to 32,000 coins. It's this dip that you see in the morning that I want you guys to hone in on and watch for today on Saturday and look for some profit potential. If you see a card drop off a decent amount. Now, again, it has to be a sizable drop off. It can't just be a card like Gabriel Jesus going from, let's say, like 8,500 coins. He was 7,900, right? If he goes down to like 7,500 and then, you know, you're not expecting a big rise from there although he did go up to about 9,000 coins pre-content yesterday you know I would try to stick to the cards that are in that higher tier that are more rare those are the cards that are going to have the better fluctuations and you're going to be able to make more coins off of those Alfonso Davies let's just take a peek at his card because I see his price is going up he was at 23k went down a little bit and then it went up to 24 you know that really isn't worth your coin uh trade if you will you want to see those fluctuations that are you know maybe even 10 percent right that kyle walker was literally the best example of a card yesterday that had a really good move so this is what i would say watch today on saturday if you're tr wanting to try to trade like this watch for a card that is popular that is pretty rare higher rated meta potential to rise more of course having a dip like this in the morning on saturday because there could be opportunities to trade with that and that is exactly what i did i bought a kyle walker at thirty thousand coins sold it at 37 yes it did take me almost all day to sell it but you know 
it, it is it is what it is. We're struggling for coins on this market right now anyways. So some signs of life in that area and some fluctuation that we can see and watch after having the second full day of the web app out was so very nice to see. So watch that today. Now also, like I said, and as you guys know, the early access challenge number one dropped yesterday. Now, the fact there's a number one on this SPC gives me hope that there should be a number two, maybe a number three, right? EA, whenever they number something, they always, if, if there's a one, then like 99% of the time, there's gonna be a two. So an early access challenge two, I would be prepared to see that today, maybe tomorrow on Sunday, hopefully with more tradable packs. And one thing that I saw a lot of yesterday was the lower tier cards that were also still worth a good amount, like this LaCroix, of course, having a bit of a bounce as people were getting on the game, playing FIFA, maybe buying a few cards, getting more coins from the Thursday into Friday time period. LaCroix goes up to 8.6K. The two-player pack, yes, again, a two-player pack drops. He goes down to 7,000 coins, and I actually watched his card go all the way back up to 8K. Footbin doesn't show it, but he was there. We watched it on stream. He went. He was actually under 7K at this point, too. You could get him on Snipe at 6,700 coins. And then I'm not even kidding, an hour later, he was 8K. So watch for those fluctuations on cards that are a little bit cheaper that are going to get packed some more. Gabriel Jesus is another really great option to watch uh, on a card like a fluctuation like this. He was up at 8,900 coins, went all the way down. He was actually about 70, 7,800, 7,900. And he did have sales at like 85 to 8,600. So it's not really big profits and it doesn't work with every single card. But if you find some players like that, that you can fluctuation trade with, with some supply coming onto the market, that can be a really, really good way to trade. Again, you wanna look for cards that are on the lower tier. Um, but also cards that have pretty good movements. Tonali was one that was really good yesterday. Fakir was one who right now is almost, you know, 11, 12,000 coins. Yesterday, he went to 9K, kind of went up to about 11, went down to 97. You probably could have gotten snipes maybe at like 92, 93, and boom, look, he just keeps going up at 11,000 coins now. So watch out for more tradable supply today. That's going to be a great opportunity to trade with some of those middle to lower tier cards that are going to get packed a decent amount, but make sure they're still popular. So watch out for those sorts of trends on the market as well. I was excited to see those two new ways, ways to trade uh, on the game as well. I was trying to snipe some of these guys like Kessie yesterday. Again, getting some of the snipes is very, very helpful um, when you're having price fluctuations like this because... It allows you just to get a couple extra hundred coins maybe of profit on the end of the sale. And it gives you a little bit of a safety net, if you will. If a card doesn't rise up as high as you maybe thought it was going to, you know, you have that safety net of being able to know you bought that card for a, a couple hundred coins less on a snipe. So you don't need it to rise up all the way back to where it was. So that's kind of one thing I wanted to look at. And also I'm noticing on the market too that non-rares are starting to move a little bit more. Like I was just randomly looking through my club. What's this guy's name again? I have in my transfer targets, Zuby Mendy. I was randomly searching up a card actually on Footbin and I saw this guy was selling for 800 coins at the time when I looked earlier today, but now he's selling for how much? Like 500 coins? Like these non-rares are starting to fluctuate a lot more. And if you find the right card, and especially if you can get a decent amount of them on bid, you can catch some pretty good fluctuations of cards that move between 500 and 1,000 coins, you know, maybe once a day or something like that. I think really what this is telling me and showing me is people are starting to do more of the advanced SBCs. Even though they're untradeable, people are starting to do more of these SBCs because they're getting coins from doing the marquee matchups to the early access challenge SBCs. And then there's nothing else to do except try to trade and make coins or go on open packs and opening packs is pretty fun, right? So I think people are going and starting to do these SBCs. But again, I will mention right now, there are bugged SBCs in both of these. I believe Hybrid Leagues and Hybrid Nations is both a little bugged. Um, it seemed like EA was going to try to fix around the world. It said um, minimum two chemistry points on each player when I first clicked into this SPC yesterday. Um, and actually, if you see on, they have this little like Trello board here, their direct communication account tweeted this out. They are investigating that some SPCs cannot be fully completed. It's been investigation, invest, it's being investigated for a while now, but it has not been fixed, of course as you and me very well know. So they're on the issue, but nothing has actually been fixed yet. But I'm really hoping that they can fix that SBC and the other kind of glitches and issues that are going on with those at the moment, because that would make this game, it would at least give you something else to do uh, 
on the SBC section, if you know what I mean. So hopefully those get fixed. But again, like I said, start watch those non-rare gold cards because they do have pretty good movements in price. You know, I was just kind of looking at some random cards across the market. Like here's one Br Braganza that's right now selling for like 850. You know, it's it's like it's pretty random. It really is. And I, there's it's not 100% random. There is some you know detail and some deep diving that goes into this. Um, but you know, you can look on Footbin. The best way that I would tell you to do this to find cards and that are selling uh, would be to set up this little filter like I did right here. You go on Footbin, you go players, FIFA 23 players, version, gold, non rare. We showed this in one of the videos a couple days ago as well. And then you go over here to price and just type in 800, or you know, even if you want to make it lower, you could type 600, filter by price, and then you can see all the cards that are maybe selling for above a thousand coins. Only thing I will tell you is. Footbin is not updating these prices at night a lot. Updated two hours ago for Le Normand. Like if I go to the market and look at Le Normand right now, is he actually gonna be 950 coins? Yeah, see, he's not. He's a little bit less than that. He's not far off, but he is a little bit less than that. So that's one thing that I would mention is, you know, Footbin is doing great. They're getting the, the cards back up and you can see a lot of prices, but it is a little bit slower. Still, it's not like really, really fast yet. So just kind of watch out for that. Uh, if you're trading with those cards, but I think that's another trading method is people are doing SBCs that we can make some coins off of this weekend on the game. Last thing I want to talk about is the first leak of FIFA 23. Yes, we have an SBC leak. Uh, Foot Sheriff tweeted out this on hell D Maria wants to watch SBC yesterday. He said that it is added to come in the following days. Now we know a little bit of inside information. Well, it's not even inside information. EA posted this on the pitch notes that they released on Wednesday. They said there will be a wants to watch player SBC released on during the early access period, which to them, I believe in the way they worded the pitch notes, the early access period would mean Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday before the 30th. So the 27th, 28th, 29th. I think that on the 27th Tuesday, that is when this SBC will drop. Uh, our first ones to watch, our first player SBC of the year could be pretty soon. And I mean, Di Maria is not that terrible of a card. Of course, it would have the same stats as his gold. Again, the potential to upgrade. This one would have the wins to watch upgrade potential and the World Cup upgrade potential. Because again, if you guys missed that as well, ones to watches do get an upgrade this year. Um, if their country wins a game in the World Cup, just a cheeky plus one, even if that player is not there, they get a plus one. So a Di Maria would have obviously the potential to press plus one with Argentina being in the World Cup. Now his card, I believe right now, I think Di Maria has a price range issue. He can't be listed under 11,000 coins, which is a bummer. He does have five-star skills, which is cool. Two-star weak foot, which is not cool. But it's all going to come down to the price of this SBC. So be on the lookout. I mean, if this is an SBC that you would think uh, would be interesting for you. Of course, in this brand new way of the whole new chemistry uh, system and the whole new workings of that, how are links to a guy like this Di Maria going to go up? Because in the past, we would have thought of, okay, a striker or a right back or a center mid that would link to uh, Di Maria would technically go up. But, you know, technically this year in FIFA 23, Chiesa could go up in price because of an SBC like that being released just because they're both from Juve and they would obviously both get chemistry points from both being at Juve. So that's really interesting. We'll have to see how that goes. It all depends on the price and this is if this SBC is good or not. One upgrade, his pace and his shooting goes above 80. His dribbling gets close to 90 and his passing gets into the high 80s. That's, it's really not gonna be a bad card for an SBC if it's pretty cheap. You know, Serie A is always undervalued anyway for starter teams. So that's going to be an SBC that I will consider. But if it's going to be expensive, then no shot. But we'll just have to see most likely on Tuesday. So we'll probably talk about that later on uh, as we get closer to that date. But I wanted to kind of put that out there since that was technically our first FIFA 23 like SBC leak that we do have. So just a little bit of an account update for me. Uh, yesterday was a pretty solid day of making coins. I did sell the Kyle Walker. I've got a Tonali and two Cancelos right now and some other stuff on the transfer list that I'm trying to trade with and make some coins off of. Uh, the transfer profit is about up to 100 and, 130,000, I think. And I think if we actually you know, sold everything, we would be around like 135,000 coins-ish. So my transfer profit to actual coins ratio is pretty accurate right now. There really haven't been too many flips where the tax portion of that has been taken out. And of course, 
not shown and, and carried through to, to the transfer profit. Again, transfer profit is just very a, a lucrative measurement. It's not 100% accurate to how many coins somebody has. But right now in the early game, it is because a lot of the player flips that we've been doing, it's not like I'm flipping icons and making 50K profit, but you know selling it for 200K more because there's a lot of tax. We don't have a lot of that going on right now in this market. But I just wanted to bring you kind of a little market update video today again, and just kind of looking forward to again, just being careful with some of these lower rated cards that are still carrying a pretty high price tag, even if it's less than 10K for like in like this just St. Juice Day, 3,700 coins. Like that's a card, again, I would really look to sell because that supply is gonna come in hot. And if you're wondering how much supply some of these cards have, take a look at this. Varan, 84 rated, uh, is of course locked with his, um, his price range at 100,000 coins. Look how many pages, and this is the dead of night, mind you, when the market probably has like half of its listings in normal. Yesterday on stream, we were taking a look at this. There are so many Varans listed up on the market as a meta player in FIFA with the 84 rated. Like, just think about that means there's going to be this many, just as many of these Militao or, um, you know, Ben Yedder is 84 rated. Like, most of the 84 rated cards in this game will have similar supply that you see here to Rafael Varan, Varan pages and pages. So, that's just kind of something to remember as a lot of people are starting to hold cards of that, you know, value and that rating as well for investments. As, as yes, we do expect guys like Kessie to maybe go up a little bit more in price, Ben Yedder to rise a little bit in price, Bellingham in that boat as well, Diogo Jota being 85 rated. But that's just another kind of word of warning to, you know, just remember that there is a lot of supply on this game. That's something that we learned last year, and it's absolutely going to be a part of the market this year as well. So I wanted to point that out really fast at the end of the video. There's a lot more market theory to come in the next coming days because once we get close to Tuesday, things are going to get real. It's kind of the calm before the storm, but that's why I wanted to bring you this video today. So if you enjoyed it, smash the thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. It has been Nate, the Foot Account, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.